Hello, welcome once again. The most difficult problem is always about no starts and no cranks in uh, vehicles. If you look it up in the diagrams, um, you'll see there's a block diagram. This is considered a block diagram. So everything is labeled like a block. So the sensor, the modules, the fuel injectors, you see these type of dotted lines. This is called the block diagram, which is under the power distribution circuit. This gives you an overall view, almost like a flow chart <clears throat> of the system that you're looking for. When you'll feel comfortable with this type of diagram, you move over to the actual component level diagram. So let's try to work on first the block diagram. Well, first one, before the block diagram actually, you're gonna see a battery. We know the symbol for a battery. We know it's going through a red wire and then we're going through a, a red wire coming into the fuse. Now the battery, fuse which is a 175 amp fuse that's the highest rated fuse now where is it located let's say i want to try to find this fuse fuse holder right of radiator that's the location for fuse the battery fuse okay so in this type of diagram it actually tells you the location right next to the component which is very convenient now if we follow the arrow we're coming out of <clears throat> the fuse so voltage wise how much do we have always at the, at the positive terminal of the battery? We always have 12 volts. How much do we have going into the battery? We should have 12 volts. What, what tells us that we should have 12 volts? Because this is just a wire. <clears throat> this is just a wire. So therefore, we don't lose any voltage across the wire. 12 volts here, 12 volts here. Now, the output of the battery fuse should also be how much? Should be 12 volts. What dictates that? Because the fuse has no voltage drop across it, no loss across it. We go in with 12 volts, we come out with 12 volts. Now, most important, we go into, we go into this wire, which is the red wire. We come to something called a stud. This is the symbol for a stud. We go into another fuse, which is ignition A fuse, 40 amps. And eventually, this feeds the starter relay for the starter motor. Okay, so we're going through two fuses. Remember that. So the output should be 12 volts. What should be the input of this fuse? The same as this one, 12 volts. What should be the output of this one? 12 volts coming out of the fuse and also going into the relay. Which terminal of the relay? Terminal what? Terminal 30. So let's go over this. From this point to this point, I should have 12, volt, 12 volts. Okay? So in other words, we're covering two fuses at one time. If I go to this point, I can measure 12 volts here at the relay or at the output of the, f the fuse, which is ignition A fuse. If I know I have 12 volts here, what does it tell you? This fuse is good. This wire is good, this fuse is good, this wire is good. Four things uh, tell me right away just by measuring this. But now let's go to the block diagram. Let's say this is difficult. You're not technical, you're a beginner. So let's see if we can follow it the same, the same pattern. Here is the battery. That symbol is the same battery. Here is now battery fuse. Now notice on the block diagram, where is the power distribution? This is where all the fuses are connected, what they feed in each circuit, okay? Here, it was a little more descriptive. It told us battery fuse 175 and its location. Here, let me move out, and like I said, I have to zoom in because I can't see every possible letter unless I zoom in. So, here's battery fuse, and here is battery fuse. Here, here. Location, here no location here now we go the same way as here we're going to we have to make our way to what to ignition a fuse we come over here and sure enough ignition a fuse we went the same path as this one 175 amps we went to 40 amps okay now <clears throat> so we're going the same path actually we go in this fuse, we come out this fuse. 
The output of this fuse goes to the starter relay. Let's compare that to this. The output of this fuse, which is this fuse, goes to starter relay. Here's the starter relay. Here is the starter relay. But it's not a symbol like this one. What is it? It's like a block diagram. So this represents what? Represents this whole relay. Okay? So it's a little easier because you're not breaking it down into terminals. The the, the control side or the load side. It's just, you're just seeing the block diagram of it. The output of this goes to what? A start ignition, ignition switch. And then it goes to the various sensors fuel injector that it's feeding okay so how do we go from 175 amps to 40 amps so obviously there's another path for this for other current to flow which is why because there's another path here also to ignition the ignition over here as you can see it's feeding other circuits and those other circuits require more current this circuit which is what which is going to the starter relay, which is one of the points, requires 40 amps or less. Okay, The other 135 amps is going to other circuits. Okay, So this is the diagram, and let's do the same thing, same concept. Well, how much do we have always at the battery? 12 volts. You're not going to have 12.6 volts on a cold day. You're going to have maybe 12.3, 12.2. Right now in the Northeast, it's the coldest of weather. So you're going to have maybe about 12.2, 12.3. Is it good enough to start? Yes, it should be good enough to start. Does it matter if it's a four cylinder, or eight cylinder? Depends on the cold crank amps. The higher the cold cranking amps in zero degrees, the better chance you have of cranking it over. That engine over so it's not just a factor a variable of 12 volts but it's also cold cranking amps is the main issue at zero degrees that manufacturer of that battery that manufacturer of that battery tells me that i can get 800 amps let's say at, at zero degrees okay at 32 degrees it'll tell me i could get a thousand amps Am I pulling that much? Well, you have to understand there's an inrush current. When you first turn on the key, there's a peak amp current. Okay? When you hold the key, it settles down, and then you then you have something called cranking amps. So from the peak amp or from the rush current, it goes down to the cranking amps. Okay? So it could go down from 500, 400 to about maybe 300, depending obviously how many cylinders, obviously. The more, the more you will pull. Okay? How do you determine that? Okay? Cubic inches, let's say. Let's say you have 256 cubic inches. For every cubic inch, you will require the minimum, the minimum of one amp of current from the battery. So, let's plug it in. If I have 256 cubic inches, I need roughly at least, at least 256 amps, cranking amps. That's without the circuits. What about all the other circuits? The modules, the ignition coils, and all the fuel injectors, the fuel pump, and all the other things, obviously. Solenoids, and ignition, all those require more current. But this is an indication, the minimum of how much you need according, according to the cubic inches, okay? If you have 300 cubic inches, I need at least 300 cranking amps from that battery. You might need 500, 600, but this is just an indication. Let's follow. So we have 12 volts here going into the battery, the battery fuse. If this battery fuse is good, how much should I measure on the other side? Remember, we don't lose any voltage, so how much do we have? 12 volts. How about on this wire? We have two wires that's being split. 12 volts on this side. How much should I have on the other side, regardless of which wire I am measuring? 12 volts. How about the input to where? The ignition A fuse. How much should I have here? 12 volts. How much should be the output of this fuse? 12 volts. How much should I have going to this blue wire, which I actually drew blue, to the starter relay? 12 volts. Same concept, same idea. Okay? Now, let's take this a little further for this one. <clears throat> one fuse, second fuse. 
Going through what? An ignition switch through the start or the run position. I'm in the start position. Okay, so this is closed in this position. <clears throat> now I'm going through what? Let's follow this path. I'm going through a third fuse. So follow this. I'm going from 175 amps to 40 amps. I decreased it even more. Going now through an ignition switch through what? through a 15 amp fuse so basically what did i do i went from 175 amps to 15 amps for what for the fuel injectors for the modules over here see powertrain module so all these modules take less than 15 amps how much do you think your headlights take about 12 amps 15 amps equivalent to this in this case a crankshaft sensor right in this case, the essential sequential fuel injectors, six injectors. In this case, the ignition coil. In this case, also the power train control module. In this case, all of these branches are being fed by what? By this fuse, which is I should have less than 15 amps. Okay? Your headlights are taking already that much when they are on <clears throat> the bulbs. How do I know? How can I convince myself that this all this path is good in one shot without measuring every single point? Now, if you said you should go here, you're wrong. If you said you should go here, you're wrong. If you said you should measure here, you're right. <clears throat> let's, let's analyze. <clears throat> I look at the diagram. I analyze the diagram. I would only know that there are three fuses in the series, <clears throat> excuse me, with the ignition switch. I would only know that three fuses are involved and an ignition switch in series, let's say, and these are in parallel by looking at a, 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 a diagram. If I don't have the diagram, I have absolutely no idea that this is connected to this, this is connected to this, this is connected to this. Let's go back to my original question. I want to find out this one, one point of measuring with my multimeter how can i do that one fuse second fuse ignition switch in what the start position and this one so the input of this fuse is where this one i should have how much 12 volts where's the output here 12 output is where it's going to the loads these are the loads okay therefore if i put my multimeter the positive of my multimeter right here and i measure 12 volts what does that tell me that tells me what ignition switch is good in what the run position or the start position what else does it tell me we're going to check him off he's good tells me that what this wire is also good let's check off this wire what else does it tell me it tells me that this red wire is also good what else does it tell me it tells me that this ignition A fuse is also good. Check him off. What else? This wire is good. What else? Battery fuse is good. What else? This one and the battery is good. So if I put my multimeter at this point, this tells me one, two, three, four, five. Five components are good. One, two, three, four five wires are good actually four if you go here all that from what one place to measure over here that i measured 12 volts i don't have to go through every individual fuse i don't have to go to take apart the ignition switch all i do is i go to ecm fuse 15 amps i go i put my positive over here the negative always goes to what the negative terminal of the battery within a question with no question i know if i get 12 volts over here everything is good up to here i just proved it <clears throat> okay does that necessarily mean that the starter relay is good <clears throat> look at the diagram there's another wire going here what about if this wire is broken i can still have what 12 volts at this this output of the fuse but this this might be broken if this is broken no starter relay if this is broken no, if this wire is broken, no starter relay. No 12-volt swap to the starter relay. That's one way I could do it. The other way I could do it, 
The other way I could do it is a Ohm's test. I could put my negative over here. I could put my pot actually my negative here of the put on ohms and my positive where the other side of the fuse. If I measure, how much should you should you measure if you measure continuity? If there's a connection, zero ohms, zero ohms. Not one k, not two k, not three k. I should measure resistance check from here. Till here, I should measure around zero ohms. That tells me what? <clears throat> all this is intact. So what's the point of all this video after 15 minutes? If you get the wiring diagram, you should be able to what? You should be able to look at, you cut down your troubleshooting time by 50% by going to one point and saying, you know what? I'm not going to waste my time going here. I'm not going to waste my time taking apart an ignition switch. Find where it's connected to. It's connected to a fuse. And of course, a fuse, that's an easy place to get to, right? It's about, <clears throat> it's about troubleshooting and it's about easy access. So please go to my channel, Jolly Schematics for Auto, and you'll see some other videos. Thank you for watching.